of the Hitchhiking Ho Show 101. I am your host, your ghost host, <laughs> Wes Troop. And I'm back this week with another history episode. And this week we're going to take a look at the history of an attraction that was one of Disneyland's, uh, Tomorrowland's first thrill rides back in the olden days. Uh, you may know it as a couple different things. You may have seen it in a couple different incarnations if you are older. <laughs> um, and uh, if not, well, you might have at least heard of it. This week we are going to be talking about Rocket to the Moon, or better known as Flight to the Moon. Let's do it. <laughs> of Tomorrowland at Disneyland's first thrilling attractions was called Rocket to the Moon. Walt felt an experience that traveled into space would be perfect for Tomorrowland, especially seeing as space travel would still be a few years away. Imagineers designed an attraction which would simulate a trip to the moon. They created it to be a circle in the round theater with three concentric rows of stadium-style seats complete with two screens one in the center of the floor and the other on the ceiling. The screen on the floor showed riders where they had been, while the ceiling screen showed the riders where they were going, almost acting as windows. The building was designed with curves and twin domes that would house two identical theaters to be able to allow frequent quote-unquote liftoffs into space. The TWA Moonliner, which we already discussed in a previous episode, stood outside of the building and was a great icon to bring attention to the attraction. The experience would be sponsored by Trans World Airlines as well. Rocket to the Moon began blasting guests into space on July 22, 1955. Once inside the building or launch pad, the ride attendants selected your rocket, either Diana or Luna, or later known as Arturus or Polaris. Park guests then loaded into the circular theater, much like the current setup for Star Tours. With a rumble, the rocket took off toward the moon, with the upper screen showing the destination and the lower screen showing where the rocket had been. Riders lifted above Disneyland, saw Anaheim disappear into the clouds, then Southern California, then the United States, and eventually the Earth, soon finding themselves in outer space. As the rocket made a loop around the rear of the moon, a film played over the floor screen, teaching facts about the moon and space. Finally, the rocket made a return trip, touching down safely back into Tomorrowland. TWA left as the attraction sponsor in 1961, but the ride would pick up Douglas Aircraft Company as its new sponsor in 1962. In 1966, Tomorrowland was totally remodeled, and the Rocket to the Moon attraction would have a few changes made to it as well. The attraction's exterior was drastically changed as part of the new Tomorrowland. Also that year, sponsor Douglas Aircraft merged with McDonnell Aircraft to form McDonnell Douglas. The landmark Moonliner rocket was replaced with a large swooping sign reminiscent of the McDonnell Douglas new logo, with the new people mover gliding overhead. There would also be a brand new pre-show area added. Hydraulic mechanisms were also added beneath each seat, causing it to deflate and make guests sink an inch lower into their seats during the liftoff portion. The hydraulics were reactivated later in the flight, raising the seat about an inch. The effect was supposed to simulate the G-forces of acceleration. The name of the ride was changed as well, becoming Flight to the Moon in anticipation of astronauts making a similar journey. The new pre-show began with a hostess, a quote-unquote, escorting park guests into the area called Spaceport Mission Control. She then introduced Tom Morrow an audio-animatronic figure voiced by George Walsh. 
While waiting for Flight 92 to finish final flight preparations, the hostess would ask Mr. Morrow a few short questions relevant to the flight. Tom would spend the next few minutes explaining the various operations being conducted. Guests would then be escorted to the main theater known as the Lunar Transport for the rest of the familiar portion of the attraction. A live telecast from the moon, yeah, quote unquote live telecast, featuring an interview with an astronaut and a meteoroid shower hitting the spacecraft were added to the attraction. The Flight to the Moon attraction would also find its way on the roster for the upcoming Florida Park. Flight to the Moon opened on December 24, 1971 as an early Christmas gift for park guests at the Magic Kingdom. It was supposed to open earlier, but suffered technical issues. With astronauts already participating in moon landings, seeing the moon from a distance became outdated and was no longer exciting park visitors. The flight to the moon attraction would once again morph into a different attraction after closing in 1975 in both Disneyland and the Magic Kingdom. The attraction would become Mission to Mars, which opened in Disneyland on March 21, 1975 and on June 7, 1975 at the Magic Kingdom. At Disneyland, Mission to Mars closed on November 2, 1992. On May 22, 1998, the Red Rockets Pizza Port restaurant opened in the space. A scaled-down replica of the Moonliner was also placed next to the building in tribute to the history of the location. At the Magic Kingdom, Mission to Mars closed on October 4, 1993 and would be replaced with the extraterrestrial Alien Encounter, which officially opened on June 20, 1995. Alien Encounter would close on October 12, 2003, and today the space houses the Stitches Great Escape Attraction, which opened on November 18, 2004. While it's certainly not the same as the original Rocket to the Moon ride, park guests at Walt Disney World can at least somewhat get the feel of what the now extinct attraction felt like. Alright, well that's the show. I'll be back next week with another episode. Until then, don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Hitcho Show. You can like the show on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Hitcho Show. Follow on the Twitter and the Instagram at Hitcho Show. And of course, if you want to listen to the show or you are listening to the show, you can do so on Podbean. It's HitchoShow.Podbean.com. And you can search for the show on iTunes or Stitcher under the Hitchhiking Host Show or West Troop. Until next time, don't forget to... For the next episode, see ya.